Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I am Hashem Ali Khan. Now I am going to start a new chapter in advanced accounting that is valuation of goodwill. So before starting the problems, I will give two theory videos on the meaning of the term goodwill. So in this video, I am going to explain you about the meaning and definition of goodwill, features of goodwill, need for valuation of goodwill, then what are the factors affecting the value of goodwill and lastly what are the methods of calculating goodwill. These topics I am going to cover up in the first two videos then we will start the problem. In examination they will ask you not only the problems but also the theory concept on goodwill and without understanding the concept you should not go to solve the problem. That's why this video is very very important so watch the video till the end don't skip in between. Take the screenshot of the points which I have written on the board then I'll explain every point in detail. The meaning of the term goodwill. Goodwill is one of the intangible asset. There are two types of assets, tangible, intangible. Tangible assets means those assets which we can see, which we can touch. Example, machinery, building, furniture, equipment, computers, vehicles, all these are tangible assets. Apart from tangible assets, we have intangible assets. The assets which we cannot see, which we cannot touch, but it exists. It will contribute to the profit generating of the business. So first point you have to remember, goodwill is one of the intangible asset. Secondly, it contributes the, to the profit earning capacity of the business. A business will earn the profit by using the assets. So assets means both assets, tangible as well as intangible assets. So in other words, we can say goodwill will help in generating the profits of the business. Whichever business is having goodwill, the earning capacity will be more. It is a benefit advantage of good name, reputation or connection of the business. Every business will not have the goodwill. Only those business which is having some reputation in the market, reputation among the customers, they are having a good name and they are having some connection with any other entity. In those cases only the business will have the goodwill. Next one is it is the attractive force which brings in customers. Whichever organization is having goodwill, more customers are attached. The customers will go only to those businesses which are having some reputation, good name in the business. So goodwill is an attractive force which brings in more customers. Lastly, it is the one thing which distinguishes between an old business and a new business. When a new business is set up, it will not have the goodwill. It will earn goodwill. It will generate goodwill over a period of time. So we can say no goodwill for a new business and old business will have the goodwill. So distinguishing factor between old and new. This uh, these points will explain you about the meaning of the term goodwill. Simple, we can say goodwill is the good name, reputation or connection of the business. It is an intangible asset. Goodwill will contribute in generating more profits. Goodwill is that thing which distinguishes between old business and a new business. Like this, this uh, these points will explain you about the meaning of the term goodwill. Now, a definition. Many definitions are given. Goodwill is that concept which is easily easy to understand but difficult to define. It is easy to understand it but there are many definitions of the term goodwill. Only two reputed renowned authors definitions I am going to explain you. First Spicer and Pegler renowned authors. They have given the definition of the term goodwill. Spicer and Pegler defines it as goodwill may be said to be that element Goodwill may be said to be that element arising from reputation, connection or any other advantage. So it, it is that thing which arises from the reputation, goodwill or connection or any other advantage 
possessed by a business which enables it to earn greater profit. So that element, it is uh, Spicer and Pegler says, goodwill arises from that element. That element from reputation or a good name or any other advantage possessed by a business which helps in earning greater profits. Then the normally, then the return normally expected on the capital represented by net tangible assets employed in the business. So normally a business will earn a certain percentage of return on the net tangible assets employed in the business. For example, in a business, the net tangible assets are 10 lakh. The normal return, uh, I mean, uh, earn on this net investment will be 10%. So 10% of 10 lakh, you will get 1 lakh. The normal return is 1 lakh. But the business which is having goodwill, it is earning 12 lakh rupees. Why this uh, business is earning 12 lakh, whereas on the return on the net tangible assets, it comes to only 1 lakh because this 2 lakh extra earning is coming on account of goodwill. That is the definition given by Spicer and Pegler. Now another definition was given by Professor Dixie. He says when a man pays for goodwill, he pays for something which places him in the position of being able to earn more than he would be able to do on his own unaided efforts. When a person is paying some goodwill, he is paying because he will be uh, in a position to earn more profits than what profit he would have earned by applying his own unaided efforts. Without uh, any help, without any aid, if I apply my efforts on my business, I would have earned one lakh. But if I am purchasing your business, I am going to earn 1,50,000. So I am going to earn more by, uh, apply, by uh, using this goodwill. So Professor Dixie says when a man pays for goodwill, he is paying because he is in a position to earn more profits than what profit he would have earned by applying his own unaided efforts. So, so far I have explained you about the meaning of the term goodwill and definitions of goodwill. So students, till now you are clear about the concept of the word goodwill. Now features of goodwill. In examination they will ask you what is goodwill and what are the features of goodwill? What are the characteristics of goodwill? The first feature is goodwill is incapable of realizing, realization separately from the business as a whole. That is goodwill is realizable only if the business is disposed. See, goodwill, goodwill is an intangible asset which is attached to the business. We cannot separate the business and goodwill. A business, can, a business cannot sell the goodwill separately. So the goodwill is inseparable with the business. If the business is selling the goodwill, uh, selling, uh, if a business is being sold at that time only goodwill will go. So goodwill cannot be separated. It is attached to the business. That is the first characteristic feature. Second one, value of the goodwill has no relationship with any cost. By incurring some cost, we cannot be able to, uh, I mean, create the goodwill. Goodwill is created by a number of factors. Innumerable factors are there. On account of that, goodwill is generated. We cannot spend the money and say thus we are spending 10,000 rupees to make the goodwill. No, there is no relationship. Third one, the value of the goodwill may be positive or negative. Just like reputation or disreputation. If the business is having a reputation, it will have a positive goodwill. If a business is having disreputation, it will have a negative goodwill. The next one is the value of the goodwill fluctuate from time to time. Goodwill will not remain same always. From time to time, the value of the goodwill may fluctuate. Next, assessment of goodwill is very highly subjective matter. There is no, it's not a single method which can be applied easily to calculate goodwill. Goodwill depends on different methods, on different criteria. So we don't have a single method, objective method of calculating good goodwill. It's a subjective method. It differs from one person to another person, one business to another person. 
another business. Now, goodwill may be inherent or purchased goodwill. There are, goodwill can be divided into two types. Inherent. Inherent goodwill means self-generated goodwill. The goodwill which is created by the business is called inherited goodwill. Inherent goodwill. And secondly, purchased goodwill. The goodwill which is purchased at the time of purchasing the business. Right? So it is not shown. Inherent goodwill is internally generated goodwill. It will not be shown in the financial statements. Whereas purchased goodwill arises on acquiring another business. One business acquires another business. At the time of purchase, some goodwill amount is paid. That is called purchased goodwill. So according to accounting standard 10, AS10, only purchased goodwill can be shown in the financial statements. Inherent goodwill should not be shown in the financial statements. That is the rule according to AS 10. So I have explained you about the features of goodwill. Now, need for valuation of goodwill. Why we need to calculate goodwill? Remember, goodwill will not be calculated at any time, at any, I mean, uh, duration of the period. But goodwill will be calculated depending on the form of the business organization. So here, the need for goodwill depends on the form of organization. First of all, in case of sole trading concern, if the business is a sole trading concern, then goodwill needs to be calculated at the time of selling the business. Suppose if I am having a shop, I am a sole trader. I need to calculate the goodwill when I am selling the business. When I am not selling the business, there is no need to calculate the value of goodwill. So only under one circumstance, at the time of selling the business, goodwill is need to be calculated. Secondly, in case of partnership concern, the necessity arises in the following cases. The second form of business organization, partnership. In a partnership, goodwill needs to be calculated under different circumstances. The first circumstances when a new partner is admitted. Whenever a new partner is being admitted, there is a need to calculate the goodwill. Similarly, when a partner retires or when a partner dies. Similarly, when there is a change in the profit sharing ratio. Whenever there is a change in the profit sharing ratio, partners may decide to value the goodwill. Next one is when the firm sells its business to another company. Sometimes a partnership firm sells the business to another company or two partnership firms merge together. In that circumstance, again, there is a need for calculating goodwill. These are the circumstances goodwill is required to be calculated in case of partnership. Now, uh, next one is in case of joint stock company, limited company. In case of joint stock company, when the goodwill needs to be calculated, First, when two or more companies are amalgamated, mergers. In case of mergers, amalgamation and uh, uh, absorption, in those cases, again, there is a need for calculating goodwill. Secondly, when the company takes over another company, it is called acquisition. One company taking over the business of another company. So at the time of acquisition, again, goodwill needs to be calculated. When a company wants to acquire controlling interest in another company, when one company wants to acquire a controlling interest in another company, in that case, again, goodwill needs to be calculated. Lastly, when government takes over the business, nationalization. At the time of nationalization, when the government taking over the business, at the time again, goodwill needs to be calculated. So, when the goodwill, in case of sole trading business, when the sole trader wants to sell away the business. In case of partnership, admission, retirement or dies, when a partner dies, change the profit sharing ratio or when the business is amalgamated with another business, these are the second. In case of limited liability company, in case of mergers, amalgamations or acquisition, one company acquires another company or one company takes a controlling interest in another company, where the government takes over. These are the circumstances which requires to calculate the value of goodwill. Now, factors affecting goodwill. <clears throat> what are the factors that needs to be considered while calculating goodwill? Profits expected to be earned by the firm. 
there is a relationship between goodwill and profit. Higher the goodwill, higher the profit. So we have to see how many years the profit we can get by having this goodwill. Cal capital requirement. Goodwill also depends on the capital requirement. So we consider the profit, we consider the capital requirement or possibility of transfer of goodwill. These are the factors which must be considered when calculating the goodwill. Next is uh, methods of calculating goodwill. Lastly, because we apply these methods to calculate the value of goodwill in the coming problems. So goodwill, there are broadly three methods of calculating the goodwill. That is average profit method, super profit method and capitalization method. So average, the easiest method is the average method. In average method, we simply calculate the average profit of the past few years and we multiply the average profit with number of years of purchase. Number of years of purchase means how many years we expect to get the same past average profit. How many years we are expecting to get the same past average profit in future also. So how many years? For example, I'm buying your business. Your business, uh, we have, will calculate the goodwill according to average profit. So we calculate what average profit you have earned in the past few years. Suppose the past average profit is 2 lakh. Now I have to estimate how many years I can be able to get the advantage of your reputation. So your reputation, your advantage I may be able to get in the next 3 years. So that is called 3 years purchase. So average profit into three years will get the value of goodwill that is called the average profit method. So under this method the value of goodwill is calculated on the basis of the average profit of the past few years multiplied by number of years in which the anticipated profits are expected. The anticipated profits are expected in future. Then uh, this method is generally adopted when a person dies or retires normally in a partnership business when a partner dies or when a partner retires. At that time, normally, this method, average profit method, will be used to calculate the goodwill. The formula for calculating goodwill is goodwill is equal to average profit into number of years of purchase. That's it. And the next method that is uh, super profit method is very, very important. And that method I'll explain in the next video, inshallah.